guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a highly, highly requested video, which is a breaking down of how I sleep train. So I have already done a sleep training video. If you missed that video, it'll be linked in the cards, that little lowercase i, so you can go ahead and watch that. I get tons of comments and emails from people thanking me for that video, saying that their baby is sleeping through the night now. And I also get a ton of questions saying, how are you doing sleep training with Cohen and can you break it down kind of age group by age group? So that is exactly what we're gonna do. The only reason why it took me a little bit to film this is because I wanted to make sure that it was working and that I was in a set pattern before I told you what I was doing. And I think Cohen is a really good study subject because he's actually been way more challenging to sleep train than Ford. And so for that reason, I think he's a really good example. Every time it rains, it rains pennies from heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains pennies from heaven? You'll find your fortune falling all over town. Just make sure that your umbrella is upside down. Cohen just turned three months old yesterday. He's sleeping on average minimum six and a half to eight and a half hours of sleep for the first set of sleep, and then usually four to five hours after that. So I'm usually up once in the night. He goes down at 7 p.m. and he usually wakes up at about 8.30 in the morning. The number one question that I get asked all the time is how can you sleep train if your baby is breastfeeding on demand? And people say babies need to feed every two to three hours and so how can you possibly sleep train if you're breastfeeding and isn't that cruel? I am an attachment parenter hybrid and so I absolutely feed on demand any time that Cohen wants to be fed, he gets fed. Before the five month mark, you cannot spoil a baby. You can't love them enough, you can't kiss them enough, you can't feed them enough. Whatever they're asking for, they need. As there is a bit of a change around the five month mark where not all cries for hunger necessarily mean that they're hungry. Sometimes it can just mean comfort. And so that's when the real sleep training starts. So for the first couple months, I would say up until about four months, all I do is I feed on demand. So anytime that Cohen wants to eat, he can eat. Now the trick is starting at around week two, um, infants have one sleep cycle that's usually at least four to five hours. So what you want to do is make sure that that sleep cycle is happening at the same time that you're asleep. You don't want that sleep cycle to happen during the day. So what you do is make sure that they're not sleeping for over three hours during the day. So let's go by like brand brand newborn baby. Let's say you feed them at 8 a.m and it's like a 20 minute feed and by 8 30, 8 45 they're down. So if he went down at 8.45, I wouldn't let him sleep past 11.45. So if at 11.45 he was still asleep, I would wake him up just to make sure to, that I'm breaking that sleep cycle and that he's not doing his long spurt during the day. Now for the most part with Cohen, he woke up every two hours anyways to feed, so it wasn't much of an issue. So what that means is I'm feeding usually every two to three hours and they're not sleeping longer than two to three hours at a time during the day. And I keep with that pattern up until about 11 o'clock at night, because 11 o'clock at night is usually when I wanna go to sleep. Actually, if I had it my way, I'd go to sleep at 10, but we push it to 11. So at 11 o'clock at night is when I do my last shorter sleep cycle. So I feed them, I put them down, and I let them sleep as as long as they need to sleep. Usually at that point, Cohen would do his four hour spurt. So I feed him at 11, he'd be asleep at say 11.30. So he would be up at about 3.30 for a feed, and then again at about 6.30. So I'm still only getting up kind of once in the night. As you train their bodies that they're having their longer sleep cycle at the middle of the night as opposed to during the day, as they gradually get older and as they gradually increase that longer sleep cycle, it's happening in the middle of the night. Another question I get asked is what about growth spurts? And the answer is yes, you're going to have setbacks with growth spurts. So there's a growth spurt at about six to eight weeks. There's another growth spurt at about three months. So when you have a growth spurt and they're nursing, they're back to nursing every two hours, sometimes every hour, then of course for those couple of nights, the sleep is going to be disrupted. You're not gonna get that six hour break. And that's okay, but what you need to keep in mind is growth spurts are not for longer than a full week. So you can tell it's a growth spurt if they're waking up more often, they wanna feed more often, but it's only lasting a couple nights. If it's only lasting a couple nights and then they go back to the sleep pattern that you want, then it was just a growth spurt and that's totally fine. Another thing I do is I make sure that the nighttime feedings are the business feed, and I talked about that in my other video, but basically the lights don't go on, you don't make eye contact, you don't talk to them. <laughs> It is, you are strictly a boob at that point, or you are strictly a bottle at that point. So I pick him up, 
I nurse him, and I put him back down. It's as minimal contact as possible, and the reason is you almost want to do a dream feed. You don't really want them to fully wake up and fully engage. Um, you want them to just fill the need. So they're waking up because they're hungry, okay, I'll feed you, but you're going back down. And what you're doing in that is training them that at nighttime, they don't wake up unless they're hungry. I don't even change his diaper in the middle of the night. Unless, unless he's pooped or he's wet through, I don't even change him because as long as he hasn't leaked and as long as he hasn't pooped, he's comfortable enough that he can go back to sleep. Even if it's a wet diaper, it doesn't bother him. I also just make sure to load him up with diaper cream before I do that 11 p.m. feeding. That way the wetness doesn't bother him. But of course, if they wet through or if they poop, you're gonna need to change them. But if you need to change them, again, do like the minimal amount of interaction as possible. That just helps train them that the nighttime is for sleeping. So that is what I have done with Cohen so far. I would say he went into the longer sleep cycles. It took him a little bit longer than it did with Ford. By week two with Ford, I was only getting up once in the night. It took more like three or four weeks with Cohen because he had severe reflux. So he was throwing up at least half of everything he was eating and he was up more often because of that. Now that he's three months, I've gotten rid of the 11 p.m. feed and that is because he's doing those longer spurts. And so because he can do those longer spurts, I don't have to do the 11 p.m. feed. So I do bath and kind of wind down time at 6.30. I nurse him at 7. Usually he is asleep by 7.15, 7.20-ish, sometimes 7.30 if it's a really long feed. I'm usually up again at around 2.30 or 3.30 in the morning and then he sleeps through till 8.30. And that sets him up for a really great pattern because around the four to five month mark when they really can go through the night without needing that middle of the night feed, I only have one feeding to gradually work him out of needing. And I will go into how I do that step by step when we get to that point. But if you want a sneak preview, you can watch my previous video where I do talk about the steps. So in terms of whether you nurse them to sleep or put them down awake, um, I would say it totally depends on your baby. With Ford, he at this stage needed to be nursed to sleep. So I would nurse him until he wasn't actively nursing anymore. He was just kind of like suckling and hanging out and his eyes were closed. He was definitely kind of limp limbed and then I would move him to the crib. Cohen isn't as particular, which I think is going to help me in the long run. As long as he's not actively nursing, I can put him down and he can still be awake and he'll fall asleep on his own. Ford wasn't the same. So again, it just depends on the baby. I hope that answers your questions for newborn feeding. If you have any more, leave them in the comments below and I can always do a follow-up video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that thumbs up button. And if you're new, make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. See you guys in the next one. Bye. All I do is dream of you the whole night through. Bye.